stuff in here. I love playing around with all of this stuff. As you can see, I do take directions very well. <laughs> my favorite grade to teach was kindergarten because they're like, their minds were like blank slates and you can get them to do all kinds of stuff, funny stuff and interesting stuff. But it was kind of like still hurting cats and uh, I kind of equate that when I speak at um, work camp conferences because you know, everybody goes to this, you get to the point where you're getting ready to talk and you're gonna do something and that sometimes that imposter syndrome sometimes hits you. And it's like you think, okay, do I really know what I'm doing? I got my slides all set, everything's good. You kind of sort of think about what could possibly go wrong, and then you're like, oh, forget it. I know more than everybody else, so. and you keep <laughs> going forward. And then you kind of make it up as you go along. But uh, we're going to talk about the metaverse. We're here at WordCamp Buffalo, and my dear wife's getting that together, so we're going to we're going to be good with it. So I'm going to ask three people a question. Okay, so you just give me your best answer. So first of all, young lady right here, your definition of what is the metaverse? And if you don't know, it's okay to say you don't know. You don't know? Okay. All right, young lady in the corner in the back, what is AR? Augmented reality. There you go, thank you. Can you explain like a little bit more in depth? What you think it is, I, we don't want a Google answer. Okay, um, I guess it's a way, uh, a way that Uh, young man in the back, what is VR? What is your definition for VR? Virtual reality. Okay. Putting on a big headset and then being in some <laughs> other world. Okay. Pretty cool. Very good. And young man right here, what is your definition of WordPress? Uh, VR. VR. Another source platform Open for okay. publishing and development. All right. Very good. Thank you for all. Because we're going to go through this and kind of see how we can blend all of this together so that way it's not just talking about one part, but multiple parts. So a big part, big piece of what we all know and love is WordPress and WordCamp. So the speed of thought is not just a phrase, it's a fact of life, because if you remember last year, we didn't have any conversations too much about AR, VR, MR, XR, all that kind of stuff. So now it's all mixed together. People are trying to figure out how are you going to apply it? Come on in. How are we all going to apply it to what we're doing related to WordPress and how it's going to affect, because it is in the future of WordCamp. And Aida and I, we have conversations about like what's the future going to be like in a funny, kind of sort of joking way that we're all going to be avatars going to WordCamps in the metaverse and hanging out, which will eventually happen. And or uh, getting people to understand that this is the world that we live in. There's so much going on. But again, try not to be scared of it. Try not to worry about like the drastic, crazy stuff going on. Um, just a little bit about me and about what we're doing. Um, as far as teaching, I was a health and physical education teacher. Then I transitioned to STEAM. So STEAM is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And then Aida and I, we did workshops in Jacksonville. Actually, excuse me, Rebecca, we're from Jacksonville, Florida. Just for the tell me. <laughs> See, she, she's used to it. We're from Jacksonville, Florida, northeast part of Florida, and we're both educators. Obviously, we're both married, because I take directions really good most of the time. And uh, we love doing this. I've been a part of the WordCamp community, WordPress community since 2010, and Aida's been a part of the community since 2018. And our first WordCamp we went together was Miami, uh, and that was their 10th year anniversary. So as we were more involved in the community, like we love the friendship and the, the things that we learn that we take back to Jacksonville and we teach to the kids that we work with. Um, but Aida teaches with uh, teaches adults, specifically older women, to emphasize their um, technology engagement is really important because there's a lot of data related to that. But um, this is us, this is what we do. Uh, we're part of World, um, the World Metaverse Council Education, which is a new international group that focuses on education and technology. There's a group called Gatherverse. They're more in depth in the metaverse and education. So a lot of it deals with education, but it also can be transported into um, careers as well. And we love to focus on that because we love to say, hey, you can't be stagnant in this world of technology. You have to be able to know and grow. 
Um, he has the feedback information, how to connect with me, and also how to connect with IU as well. So we do answer our emails, our Twitter, our Instagram. What else? Sometimes Slack. Okay. Sometimes Slack. Yeah, Slack. Because you know, you get all that kind of stuff. I was like, have you he's, checked he's your Slack? Okay. So, you know, all these elements. And we always apologize. Say, well, if you send us a message in this within a week, you know, it's because we're looking at other stuff. But we all get inundated sometimes with doing that. So, my brand is my quest to teach. I'm sorry to put up here. I'm sorry to. Um, Aida's brand is Love Built Life. So, we have a company together, but we have our separate companies as well, which makes it interesting being a husband and wife because we always remind each other it's not a competition. You know, this is a collaboration and a, and a cooperative effort here. But um, interesting enough, we're both the oldest in our families, um, older for her brother and her sister, those are my brothers. So it's like we always have this older mentality, like, yeah, I need to be like up here and keep it going. So I am a role model for my younger brothers and sisters. But that's an interesting thought because the older you get, sometimes you still have that mentality that your brothers and sisters or your younger brothers and sisters, you want to treat them that way. So you have to be careful with that thought. Um, I'm happily 60. I'll be 61 June 10th of this year. And the reason I say that, because if I can be energetic like this about technology, I like to inspire other people to be, a, be as energetic as well. Because there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to do and a lot to grow. So welcome to WCBUF. And I created this and Paint 3D. And we do a workshop where we teach kids how to create NFTs with Paint 3D. Now, if you don't know what an NFT is, non-fungible token, which is on the blockchain, but these are unblocked NFTs. I mean, they're not on the blockchain, but we teach kids how to create these and a business model to use. So there's a lot of different technologies out there. So this is our opportunity to collaborate and share information. We always like to encourage everybody, before you leave WordCamp, make sure you have everybody that you see their um, business information, because this is a great collaborative effort. Right? That's good. Okay. So we have to work together, we collaborate together. And in, in my 33 years of teaching, even in education, I have never seen a community that works so well together as WordPress. Now, in education, you may have American Federation of Teachers, National Education Association, all of that. They have their own agenda. But in our understanding of WordPress, it's like you can communicate with so many wonderful, bright, smart, intelligent, creative people in different areas of technology. So I have no artistic bone in my body, but my wife is an artist and author. So if I need something about artwork and color and stuff, I go to her. If I need information about podcasting, because we do a podcast with a middle school, we volunteer, you know, I'll ask Michelle or a couple of other people about podcasting. Um, web development, there's different people we ask about web development, because we help people with that as well. But in our WordPress community, um, there's so much to do, and we always like to say, we, we're on transformative times. Okay, we're almost to the point where, and we had this discussion last night about we're, we're gonna get a car, and our car is almost like Kit, remember Kit? The car that's like talking to you, we're almost to that point. They're almost driving themselves. They're navigating with all this technology. So we're at that point where electricity and all this stuff messes together and AI. So you can't get away from it. You can't run away from it. So the metaverse is changing people's lives. All right. One day we're going to have a metaverse uh, platform for WordPress where if someone can't attend because of distance or they're isolated or whatever, they're gonna come in as avatars. And we're gonna cover avatars in a little bit. So we need to make sure that we pivot to embracing the technology and gradually learning more about it. The most frightening thing you can have is if somebody starts talking about a new technology and automatically in your brain, you think you have to learn everything about it and be the expert. So be real cautious about people with new technologies that say they're the expert of that technology when it's just coming out, all right? You learn as much as you can. The important thing is that you learn how to apply it to your particular area of your expertise, to your knowledge ability where you can take it and reshape it, reform it, and apply it. So when you read information like this, we're all WordPressers, so which is really the cool name. 
So we're all work pressures, and as I said before, we need to be able to have digital pivots. When we're changing, how do we take AR, how do we take AI, how do we take VR, how do we take blogging, how do we take you know, all the stuff that we do and apply it to Web3 technologies which are coming. So there is something called IoT. Can anybody tell us what their definition of IoT is? And you probably got it in this, yes sir? Internet of Things. Thank you, the Internet of Things. And the Internet of Things of applying all this technology and how you as the individual and your business or your company work within the realm of the Internet of Things. And that includes robotics. So for example, MR, AR, VR. If you take all those elements and you understand that those deal with virtual environments, how are you gonna take a virtual environment and apply it to what you do as a word presser? So if you're a web developer, how are you gonna use the knowledge of those technologies for your web design for the future? Because you may have a young person, and you know, in these ages, it's not uncommon for, when I say young person, between 18 and 32, that create a business, start making a lot of money, they want to expand and they need an awesome, wonderful, exciting, out of the box <laughs> website for them. But they want to integrate this new technology. So how do you integrate that new technology into what you're doing? So your job is to figure out what's available, what's out here, if there's new widgets or plugins that you can use to adapt to your website. And a lot of it is web-based. So it may be just a plugin, it may be just a web address, it may just be something simple. So I go by um, the word KISS, keep it simple, silly. <laughs> how, how simply can you embed it and work with the technology? I'm not a developer, I'm not an artist, um, I'm not anything technical like that, but the stuff that I use, in my mind, I have to keep it as basic as if I'm talking to a young person, like this young person over here, and they have an idea for a business, you're ultimately gonna need a website. You're ultimately gonna use social media. So when you're using those elements, what technology do you have in your mind that you need to apply it to, to build your following, um, to build sponsorships, to build the elements to keep your business growing and flowing forward and make it fun. Because my thing is if you can make it fun and enjoyable, you know, you're going to have success with it. Um, AI and web, I have three, four, and five. There's different versions. Web three we hear a lot about, web four we hear a lot about, and web five are coming along. So it's different ways you integrate with tech. Also in the internet of things you have, how are you going to work with robotics? It's going to come a time, and you can do it a little bit in um, Gmail, where you can set where your email is scheduled to be sent out. So if your email is scheduled to be sent out, the other part of that is you don't know if an actual person is going to read that email and uh, reply to it. It may be an IO, um, uh, a bot, an AI bot. So how are you going to mentally yourself reply to an AI bot? sending you questions and answering your questions you have for potential clients. Because we're getting to the point now where automation is just instantaneous. I mean, it's there, so we have to deal with it. Um, WordPress needs to be able to collaborate globally. There are work camps in India. There's work camps in Africa. I think there's work camps everywhere except Antarctica. Um, and they're working on that too. So they're like global in process. So understanding people culturally is really important as well. Uh, we had a conversation when we were coming over here with our Uber driver, and he was from India, and just understanding the background and the culture, how you apply technology, your family related to things is really important too, because people are gonna look at you as an assistive technology, as a nuisance, as a threat, whatever, because there's information out there now about the threat of what's going on in the metaverse and how that's going to affect us um, personally and in our business. So we talked about what the metaverse is. If all of us were avatars and we're coming into a creative room and we're sitting down and we're having a conversation, we can do this as avatars. The cool thing about it is our avatars will represent who we are and what we are. So if we want a different color hair, different color eyes, different color body, body style or shape or whatever, we can all do that in the metaverse. We can all still engage in conversations, we can share information. 
So it's more of a representation of who we are. Um, being in the metaverse also allows us to get us and walk around. So like with anything, we're at a work camp conference and you are not particularly want to be in a particular room. You can teleport or port to another room. So you don't just physically have to get up and walk out the door. Um, there are virtual worlds. There are universities on the metaverse. Um, we are certified virtual reality educators with Victory XR. So that's an online application where we can go in and create rooms and, and give instruction and have classes. There are universities that are on the metaverse that have classes just like in physical form. So when you hear these terms, you start to understand the importance and the impact of it. And um, there are hundreds of metaverses and virtual worlds. Um, you heard of Facebook changing their name to Meta. Well, they proclaim that Meta is, well, they try to, the only metaverse out here, but there are hundreds of metaverses out here. All right, so, so don't get misled into thinking one is better than the other because they all provide information and access specific to what the developers and designers have created or made. Okay. Uh, anybody have a question? I'll pause right here for a minute. No questions yet? Okay. All right, let me do that. So looking at the metaverse as a global world. So here we're on the planet Earth. In the metaverse, you can go to Mars, Venus, Saturn, wherever you want to go, and stand in outer space. There's a space in the metaverse called the, um, called the International Space Station. And just imagine you're standing there and the International Space Station comes by you, and you hear like the rumbling of sound and the motion. And what's interesting is, first of all, you're in the metaverse, you're in space, and you hear sound. And it's kind of like, okay, well, I can get past that because of sound. So you're going through and you're standing there and you see all the clouds around you and it's very immersive because you're looking around you. You're turning around, you're looking up, you're looking down. You look down and there's nothing but black with stars. All right, so your mind is like, oh my gosh, I'm in space. You know, I got everything around me that's going on. But to make it immersive, you still have the sound of being in space if space did have a sound. And then you can go into the metaverse um, you're in the metaverse, but you can go into the International Space Station. That's just one area, but you're floating. You know, you're immense, immersive in all of that. So you look at understanding that technology, how it's created. But if you have someone that says, I want you to design a website where people can click on links or use a plugin to go into the metaverse to experience those things. So there's a metaverse called Spatial where you can create galleries and you can set up galleries anywhere you want, like a museum, but they're interactive where you can teleport, you can click on a portal, go outside to YouTube, or you can go to a website. So you have access to all of those elements. Because there's a lot of people when you hear discussions, well, how am I going to take my WordPress developed, awesomely made, wonderfully made, that I spent hours and days and weeks creating, and have access to the metaverse? Right now, it's just the linking concept with web addresses. The other concept is how can myself as an avatar be placed into a WordPress design website? So that technology is not there yet, but it's coming. But your avatar can move around in different metaverses. If you go to Ready Player Me, it's readyplayer.me, you can create multiple avatars and have the opportunity now to play with it, to look at it, to look around at it, and use it. Um, Neil Stevenson, in 1992, wrote a book called Snow Crash, and this is where the term came from. And actually, he's still alive. He's still in a lot of talks about his concept of the metaverse, why he wrote the book, and all that, all that great information. But the concept is with blending with AI, artificial intelligence. Now, if you are a Trekkie fan, you already understand artificial intelligence, because when they talk to the computer, that's the same concept. They would tell a computer to do different things, and the computer would reply. So if you have Alexa, AI technology, Google, AI technology, in the earlier parts of Gmail, Google Mail, Gmail, when you're typing, it just did what you wanted to do. Now, it gives you suggestions for spelling. It gives you suggestions for adding people into your email that you want to send a message to because it remembers what you did previously. So all of these applications are artificial intelligence, but it's gradually being added in there. You have to remember AI, 
artificial intelligence is an assistive technology. Now, when it grows beyond assistive is when it actually starts doing stuff you don't tell it to do, like the kids sometimes. <laughs> I was like, did I tell you to do that? Why did you do that? I don't know. It just, you know. But um, it's an assistive technology. It is intelligent to a point, depending on how you define intelligence. Obviously, it is not human, okay? It's digital, it's computer generated, it's machine language, whatever language you want to use. But it learns from you, the user. So, uh, for example, uh, GPT chat, GPT, is learning from you. The other one, um, oh my gosh, my mind just went from Microsoft. That was Lynn, what was it? Bart. Bart. Bart, thank you. Bart's from Google. Um, it teaches itself not from the internet, but it learns by itself. So you have two different types of AI. One, it has learned from what everybody else has done that's posted out there on the internet up until, was it 2022, 2021? So it has access to all that information. So just think that big old brain is out here that has access to all that information that you use to answer your questions and generate answers to the questions that you ask. And then you have the other technology part that's just in itself has learned from wherever it learned it from, that's also an assistive technology. So when you're trying to do something and accomplish something and build something and create something, you have an assistant. So people used to talk about, oh, I need me a digital assistant. Somebody that knew everything. Somebody can answer all my questions. Well, now we have that. But you have to be careful because one of two things are happening. You're getting that information that you requested, but unfortunately too many people are not reading through that information to learn the accuracy and improve their understanding of how that technology works. They're just totally relying on it. Um, when I was teaching some college classes before all of this came out, we talked about these conversations about artificial intelligence. And you know, we all talk about plagiarism and stuff, and I would tell my students, you know, y'all are wonderful students, but y'all are not that smart. And I say, this is not a put down, because you have to understand as, as teachers, as educators, when we read your papers, we understand your pattern of language, your fluency, your comprehension, and your understanding. So we get that from you. So when you switch up or change something, it goes off in our brains. Where did you get that information? Why don't you cite that information? What time frame or uh, 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 mental adjustments are you making in your writing that shows growth? Because you should always show, show growth and comprehension. So if you're constantly getting information from chat, GPT, BART, whatever, and you're just applying it to what you're doing and not growing from it, that creates in your mind that I don't have to fact check or I don't have to grow from this information. I'm just gonna take it for granted that it's truthful and accurate. Because we know, um, just like you know the programs that, that are out there, on the internet, everything is true, it's right, and it's perfect, right? <laughs> exactly. All right, so, so hey, even Bart Simpson is on the internet, so you know, you gotta trust him, all right? So you think about the source of information that you get. Um, hey, I have a question for you. Thank you. Oh, it might have overheated. Okay, AI will replace some lower level, um, lower level skills or lower level jobs. So it's coming to that point now where you hear a lot of people say, well, I don't need this person and I don't need that person. But you hired that person not just to perform one skill, but multiple skills. And people, bless our hearts, we are adaptable to our different environments. And this is a perfect example. <laughs> the projector went out for whatever reason, but thank goodness I have my, uh, my presentation here. We're having a conversation and we can adapt. That doesn't mean AI will adapt to situation. How is AI going to adapt to a situation if the power goes out? Or in this case, if you're using a projector or something electronic and it doesn't overheat and stops working. 
So we as, we as people must be able to adapt. Um, one of the episodes of Star Trek, I'm a fourth generation teacher. I was watching with my mom years, years, years ago, an episode of Star Trek. And I didn't know at that time how much it would affect me. Captain Kirk, think about Star Trek, you know, you know, it's late at night, for whatever reason, he's the captain, he's walking around the starship, you know, looking around, he goes into this room, and there's a lady standing there. And he just swagged, you know, Captain Kirk, he got the swagger, and he's like, hey, honey, what's he doing, what's going on? But then he asked her, how's the kids doing? How are the kids doing? And he's in a classroom. And I'm like, oh man, they're in the classroom. So he walks around and the kids are in front of a computer. Well, you know, at that time it wasn't a real computer, it was like a box with lights and stuff on it. So they were doing their, their work on the computer and he asked, them, asked her how they were doing. She said, they're doing really good. They're getting their lessons done. They're learning a lot. And he makes his face like, hmm, that's pretty good. Okay, he said, carry on, then he turns around and walks out. Now that's a, that, that to me sent a subliminal message that here you have Star Trek, one of the most popular uh, sci-fi episodes in, in the history of the world. I know I'm exaggerating a little bit, but we love Star Trek. <laughs> and you see this part where Captain Kirk walks into this supposedly classroom and these kids are doing work on a computer. This was like way back in the 70s. So you take that compilation of information, you apply it today, that's actually happening today. Kids are in the classroom doing the work on the computer. We don't know if they're really learning. They just might be doing rote memorization or taking a test. But the idea of having just a student sit in front of a computer and doing work, but then not understanding the assessment process or the learning that they're learning and how to apply it. So needless to say, when I say that is take every opportunity to learn as much as you can to apply with what you're doing, okay? Because it is, it is here, it's not going away, it's growing, um, and it is taking shape and form you know, to um, what we're doing. Okay, thanks. And now it's showing up every time. Probably what he was trying to do. Probably like, you're talking too much, do you? <laughs> okay, so 30% of the companies in the information technology and IT sector are already present in this new reality of AI, VR, multiverse, metaverse, and all this stuff. Right. Interesting enough, a lot of information is coming from overseas because they're applying it more than we do here in the United States. They're more. Um, um, what's the word I want? Willy nilly, freedom of access, because um, they are applying it more. And here in the States, we have to understand that we cannot always, as in the book, Snow Crash, just come to terms where it's going to be natural and we just have our open arms and embrace it. Because, you know, we look at all our movies and we hear more and more. How many of y'all remember the movie The Terminator? You know, it's like you think that, what, what is that AI and all that kind of stuff? Or the Matrix, what happened in the Matrix? And I don't know anybody named Neo in, in real life, so I can't go run to them and rely on them to save all of us. But uh, there are experts out there. There are people that know this information. Just like each of us, this book comes in different colors and patterns and, and styles and models and all that good, good stuff. Just like us, we're all different. We get the same information, but we're going to apply it differently. So if each of us was a book, you know, our cover would be different. Because how we would take technology and apply it would be totally different. How we would use it and share it with each other would be totally different. Aida and I, we go to different extremes. Like, this is the best thing since sliced bread, or we can use it like this, and we can do this, and we can do that. And as we do that, we're talking, running our mouths. We have our own avatar. So we have different avatars for different occasions. Um, these, if you recognize these around here, they are from um, oh my gosh, what is it? All Space VR. All Space VR that was discontinued by Microsoft March 10th. So these are our avatars when we went to church in the metaverse. We went to church, and um, just you know, going to church, going to service, you know, meeting different people from around the world. And it was great and awesome and wonderful to do because it, it wasn't just about the church itself. But it was about, you don't know how many people that are out there that are 
that are homebound, hospital bound, um, anxious about going out in the world because of COVID and other issues that you can meet. And their whole life is wrapped around getting a chance to be an avatar and going out and meeting different people because this is their connection to the world. And when you, you see the, the, the scope of all of this and understand that here there are people all over the world that just want to get out and meet people and associate with people. So what can we do? We can walk, we can talk, we can teleport, we can travel. There's a bridge that goes across China, a glass bridge that you can get on that you can walk and you can look. So we know that we'll probably never go there because uh, we're both kind of scared of heights because when you're like thousands of feet up in the air and you're looking through a glass bridge, do you really want to do that? So the metaverse allows you to do that. You can create digital assets like NFTs, which again are non-fungible tokens, and that's multiple formats. It doesn't have to be art. It can be music, um, text, documents, all kinds of stuff. How am I doing on time? Oh, okay. So, all right. So, everybody knows who this gentleman is. Um, who is that guy? Mark Zuckerberg. I was so surprised when we were doing a lesson at one of the elementary schools. We had like first and second grade to know who Mark Zuckerberg was. So, that's how impactful technology is. What blew my mind was one day after, after school, I was working at an elementary school. I had second, third, fourth, fifth grade students tell me that they were following me on social media. So as a parent and a teacher, my first response was, what are you doing on social media in the first place? Why are you there? And then it dawned on okay, so this is the technology era, and you know, kids are gonna do that. So my mind was also, well, that means that you have to be responsible for the content that you post. Now, all of us in here are adults. We are, we may not act like it all the time, but we're all adults, we have fun. So as we follow each other, we have to remember that we are all either influenced, threatened, inspired, entertained by different types of technology. So when you look at information like this, where have we seen the metaverse? Well, we've seen it in the movies. There's a movie, Ready Player One, that was really cool. It was really amazing. Um, advertisement, uh, the Super Bowl this past year. I don't know how many advertisements there were for something related to the metaverse, the blockchain, all that stuff. So when you have it on the uh, Super Bowl commercial and millions of people around the world see that kind of stuff and they relate to it, then you know it's really impactful. Uh, anybody remembers the Matrix trilogy with, uh, like I said, Neil and all his people and everything? Uh, Ready Player One, which is an awesome movie, because you learn so much about the metaverse and what could possibly happen. Uh, Meta or Facebook, again, like I said, is not the metaverse. It's just one aspect of it. Okay. All right, your password to the metaverse. Uh, ReadyPlayer.me is where you could go and create your avatar. And I, I, I suggest that everybody should have an avatar. It's like kind of those things like everybody should have a laptop or everybody should have a cell phone or everybody should have one day a... a, a uh, electric car, your phone. Everybody should have a cell phone because of the connectivity. We teach several classes in Africa um, during the week and most of the students in Africa have a cell phone because that's their way to connect to the world. They may never get a laptop because a laptop is expensive. They may never get a desktop or a tablet, but they have access to a cell phone. Uh, a smartphone, that's their access to the world. So they already know they can create a business, they can communicate, they can apply for credit, they can do banking. Their whole life is on digital connection. So for us, with our passport, our passport is being on the metaverse. And it allows us to do so much. So taking just a couple of graphics, we can do social planning, we can do strategic development, we can do collaborations, we can embrace diversity, we can teach, engage in so many ways by our avatars being in digital spaces. So again, if we were here as avatars in this room, we could share files, we could share information, we could talk to each other. It's almost like being able to mentally connect with the person across from you and share information because you're digitally connected. And that's not what it's coming to. It's here, but it's also growing. 
okay? So you look at the network that you have, and we've all heard the term, your network, your network can equal your net worth because you have a company and you have a business and you're growing. And of course, you can have fun. Um, how many of y'all here watch anime? I watch it occasionally, all right? Um, when I was in the classroom and the students had projects to do, I used to play music from anime. And they were like, oh my gosh, Mr. Jackson, you watch anime? I'm like, yes, yeah, some of it's pretty good. And they're like, wow, did you see such and such episode? And then we get in this discussion for a little bit about anime because you're connecting, I was connecting with my audience. And I would tell them, yeah, my wife is an artist and we watch a little bit of anime and the music is awesome. So listen to the music while you design, while you create, while you do all that. Because it connects them to something that they can relate to. And that's important with technology. So make sure you relate to something and you connect to it. Uh, we went to Costa Rica this year or last year? Uh, the end of last year. The end of last year for their word camp, uh, word camp um, San Jose. And we took our Oculus and we were walking around and um, talking to people about the metaverse and what the metaverse is and getting to understand what they thought it was. We had a chance to let them um, use our Oculus. We bought our Oculus as well. Hopefully doing today, today if you want to get on, you can. Um, content matters. Your content is still important because people are going to read your content, they're going to listen to your content or whatever. And engagement is important as well because engagement is queen. That is important because people will be influenced by your content, the direction that you're going with what you're doing. But also you gotta remember facts are important, data is important, statistics, um, all that information that's relevant in growing a business and managing a business can be implemented in the metaverse. Now, with that being said, we all learn through WordPress and attending work by SEO, search engine optimization. Uh, Google is now in the process of using their AI for, I want to make sure I say this right, web pages that integrate AI technologies and metaverse technologies uh -oh, to be tracked or to be managed or to be watched or elevated within Google based on their relationship with AI technology. So I'm not a developer, I don't, I'm not at that level of that process, but I'm just letting you know now, you'll hear more and more about Google looking at websites and seeing if they're connected to any AI bots or AI related technology. And the more that there's integration, that'll elevate your content and search engine, okay? Uh, it may come to the point where there is a specific search engine or a specific related product that will totally use just AI. Okay. And I'm not talking about AI for, for searching, like we don't have GTP, but something totally different to access your information. Branding, we gotta look into branding with this. So, IRL in real life, IML. In metaverse life, IAIL. So it goes down the list, all right? So now we're gonna, somebody's gonna create a big book of acronyms for the metaverse if it's not already out here. The cool thing about this, I say, is when you look at the way words are changed and modified and designed, it creates in your mind a pattern of understanding where technology is going. Um, we were talking about this yesterday. I think uh, Maestro was there with us. We were talking at the, the speaker dinner. If you think back on the first time you learned a specific application, and I used um, Windows 3.0, um, the danger is that we move so long, with, so fast and so far with technology that sometimes we forget where we started learning something new, like Microsoft Word, like PowerPoint. Now we're up there, all this artificial intelligence stuff. So think back where you actually started learning something that gave you a challenge or issue. And I thought back when I was initially learning, and I'm dating myself now, Web 3.0, I mean, uh, Windows 3.0, and learning what GUI is, graphical user interface. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm like, oh. But, um, and when did you start using Windows or you know, the C part? So looking at all these terms and the terminology, 
we have to make sure that we understand how our learning has progressed and how we continue to learn. Establish what your goals are using AI and ER metaverse. It's in education, it's in entertainment, it's in your finances, because slowly but surely your banks are in, um, integrating it with blockchain technology, your marketing. Now we have to look at how is AI going to see our content when we're marketing and how are we going to use it. Content creation. It's not just the fact that you can go out and ask a question, I want to write, a, how do I write a blog about new technologies? All right. But if you do that and you're reading your content, make sure you apply that information to what you are actually doing. And remember, all of those um, AIs, they remember who you are and they remember your, your writing style, your question style, little bits and pieces about your personality. So your social media is going to be um, affected or influenced too because now you're going to receive different types of information from the internet, specifically your relationship to what you're trying to create or build. And access to data. Look at the access to your data because now it's a proven fact that all the information data from the chat box is not totally true. Okay, so you gotta be careful. You still gotta read, you still gotta comprehend. Um, some of the hard questions that are out there, how do you scale what you're doing? How do you apply with what the customer wants if you're creating a website for them? So now they have to take into account, you just want, you just can't have a, um, and I use this for lack of, lack of a better term, a basic standard website. Because eventually your, your customers are going to want your websites in some way embedded into the metaverse or have metaverse access. So you think about this, tools like Spatial, um, where you can have a link from Spatial into a website. So there are links. There is not a generative AI VR plugin yet that you can merge both WordPress and the metaverse. But I'm sure it's coming. Okay, because you're accessing two different networks or three different networks. So for example, our web host is SiteGround. So our web, thank you, our web host is SiteGround. AIDA creates several websites. So the process is how would a customer, it hasn't happened yet, but we've talked about it. How would a customer want their website embedded into a spatial gallery or someplace else? So that's a, a pivot point, okay? Don't abandon social media, it's just scale. All right, how can you access your, how can you use your Twitter in the metaverse? How can you use your Instagram in the metaverse? You come up with that design, you think about it and be one of those pioneers to figure out. It's probably it's more simpler than you think. Um, I love this word pivot, my people, but pivot, I get that from I even Pivot, you gotta pivot. I'm like, yeah, you gotta think about ways that's going to adapt you to the technology. Um, the technology is not going to adapt to what, um, let me make sure I say this right, the technology, you have to adapt the technology to what you want to do, the technology is not going to adapt you, us as human beings. Because when you're thinking about it, the BART and the chat GPT behind the scenes somewhere uh, is talking to each other. And we don't know what they're talking about, we don't know what you're saying, we don't know the outcome, but be sure when you're talking about intelligence, artificial or not, there's somewhere they're communicating, so something in the future is going to be created, developed, designed, that we're going to learn about. So with that being said, your social interactions are important, in-person networking is very valuable because you can talk and share and be connected. Your local, where you are in your neighborhoods, how is technology being used in your neighborhood, in your community? Mobility, your cell phone. Uh, when we're talking to youth teens and young adults and we start thinking about uh, adults as well, uh, we would start with, everybody hold up your phone and repeat after us. This can be? This can be. Your best friend? My best friend. Or your worst enemy. Oh, my worst enemy. So you keep that in the back of your mind that, okay, I can't be upset and be mad and put all kind of crazy stuff on my social accounts not just because it's wrong, not just because it's on 
your social interactions, somebody locally in your neighborhood will see it or hear about it or read it, not just because it's in your mobile device, but now you have artificial intelligence watching what you're doing. And that can, that can influence how artificial intelligence influences your perception to the world. Community, networking, social engagement, and your stature. You know, that, that is still an important word, your stature or your representation or how people perceive you. Because it's great and it's wonderful that we're all here at WordCamp, that we're all learning from each other, we got all these dynamic speakers. But when you leave here, what kind of image, or does it change your image or your perception of how you perceive yourself and put it out to the world? Interesting enough, if you haven't thought about it, WordPress manages 45, I said, I say 45 to 55% of the websites globally. And as people learn that, and understand that, then they look at us as the ultimate influencers because we know about WordPress. All right, we know about WordCamps. We're here, we're learning, we post stuff on social media. So that makes us important, valuable influencers in the world. Saying that our content is being seen by AI bots, and the AI bots are also increasing our stature as information technology. So how do you want the world and, and AI bot to perceive you? Um, engagement is important because we're all here and engaging. Uh, it's generative in intelligence. It's generating information from other sources. That's like telling a young person, do as I say, but don't do as I do. Because artificial intelligence is looking at what we're saying and also look at what we're doing. So we have to model that. Am I, am I okay? I'm sorry. Um, you may want to, if you want to have Q&A, you may okay. want to wrap it up. And, I think because you're not ready yet, why did you do that? <laughs> right now. Thank you for your help. So we still got to be, <laughs> we still got to be nice to the technology. Because, you know, timing is everything. Thank you. Y'all must have been talking last night. <laughs> but um, I had like one or two slides left. But the, the, but the main part is the technology that we create and that we generate is important, and it's going to be more important in the future. So as we do our travels and as we create content, you know, look at the relevancy and importance of it, not just now, but in five or ten years down the road. Okay. So, question, q and A. I I know y'all got a lot of questions. Yes, sir? I spend a lot of time in VR. Okay. especially during the pandemic. And one thing I noticed, reading in VR mm -hmm. is generally a bad experience. Big, bright, white boxes with tiny text right. mixed with the, the resolution that we have on headsets today isn't, isn't great. Um, That's true. Have you found any resources on designing uh, web pages or any material specifically for uh, VR? There, there are... I say like groups of people that are working on how to design in that way. Actually, the last WordCamp in um, WordCamp in Tebe in Uganda, Africa, it was a uh, there's a there was a gentleman there that was talking about methods and ways to build to actually do that, but nothing nothing in stone, nothing concrete. But the, but one of the things is like the newer generations that are coming up, they they are growing up from roadblocks, they're growing up from Minecraft. So their idea is why can't I do that stuff in VR? Um, and I think it comes down to, again, meshing or blending somehow WordPress, WordPress in the metaverse where you can actually design and do that. Um, one of the ways would probably be um, just being able to see the words and the letters and take them and move them or type in um, a whiteboard and creating content that way. But then it's like you can you may be creating the actual the wording the verbiage, but then blending the, the graphics to that is a challenge too. Because remember, you, like our websites are on multiple servers, but those servers aren't necessarily all connected together. So it's a challenge to connect different networks to be able to blend all that together. Yeah. But, yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Go ahead. About this question, a lot of times people are locked into whatever uh, company is uh, created whatever metaverse you're on. So 
Right. The point about the UI for the chat is you're stuck with that pretty much unless like a video dumps or something. And then if you're trying to, if you if they allow people to make things for it um, themselves, again, you're locked according to the pixels and uh, the size and dynamics and how the uh, assets work right. in the virtual environment. So there's not too much to this the actual company itself can run the inventor or whichever one it is, mm -hmm. um, updates the system for the UI and the right. So if I'm if I may real quick is so that's part of like for developers to think about, right? So if you want to make it a metaverse friendly site, a lot of the um, sites, you know, those of us who go into VR, it actually takes you out of the space into another space where you can view the website. But it, like he said, it's just a big white box and it's really hard to read. So that's why he does this talk, so that to, for developers to think about like, well, if I'm gonna blend this together, what can I do? So that when someone goes to my new website via the, the metaverse, it automatically will switch to make it easier and maybe even more interactive, right? Something that comes off the screen where, because um, you know, I teach VI like he was saying, and think about there are people who cannot, you know, like you requires a lot of dexterity to use a keyboard. But in the metaverse, you don't, especially if you have hand tracking. So like you said, you're in grabbing letters and doing stuff. So. Now, now artwork can be done with different uh, programs in the metaverse. So you can stand in the room and you can draw and you can design beautiful stuff and, and have it within your headset or have it within your computer. The challenge again too is to take that and blend it into a, a web platform where you still have the text, you still have the, uh, the graphics and the animation, but the, that technology will begin to come in. Like I said, it's not here. Yes, sir. Are you familiar with the Three Object Viewer plugin? No, I'm not. It's a WordPress plugin oh. that turns Gutenberg into a metaverse development box. Okay. Mm -hmm. And objects, things like a couch, are Gutenberg blocks. Oh, and so you can create more of them if you know how to make Gutenberg blocks. You can build okay. a couch. And you, it comes with a bunch of objects, couches, that you can build a room. Okay. And it comes with some NPCs. Um, but you can also, it works with any Metaverse product. So any okay. headset, any phone, whatever, AR, whatever. Um, and you can make a room that people can join and talk to each other. And the address is just the slug. Is it's WordPress. Okay. So it's just the web, the slug of your page All right. is a VR room. And he recently connected it to chat GPT mm -hmm. so you can make an AI NPC to be your, okay. like your door person right. to keep the riffraff out or whatnot. <laughs> and what was it called again? Uh, three Object Viewer. Three it's 3ov.xyz. Okay. Did y'all write that down? This is Topher, by the way. He is very loud. He is an awesome, <laughs> awesome guy. I was on a podcast for the guy that made it, and that was my first experience, and he showed okay. us, and it's just blew my mind, yeah. the, nice. the intersection of WordPress cool. in the metaverse. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Young lady, do you have a question? Because you're like the future of, of, not to put any pressure on you, but you're like the future of WordPress. Young people like yourself. Nope. Nope. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Okay, all right, so, um, I'll so, so, yes, I, so I just wanted to say, I want you to think also, considering the, the metaverse, but also considering AR technology, there are word, um, uh, developers right now that are working on working with AR technology. So in other words, if I have a headset or glasses that can use AR, mm -hmm. if I go to your website, it'll have things in front of me. So you were talking about WooCommerce. Imagine products coming off of the page. So just thinking al along those lines, but uh, there is a developer that's coming up with something like that, but you know, we can't work on it. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, if um, Walmart, uh, Home Depot, Target are in Roblox and Minecraft, um, where young people are and kids are, their mindset is already looking toward the future how to integrate that technology to inspire them to be consumers. So as, as WordPress, WordPressers, we gotta inspire young people to be creators and developers. 
not just the consumer of technology, because that's where it's, that's where it's from. We have to do that. And um, I would like to say, if you come up with an idea, um, work on it, apply it, develop it, create it, because you never know that may be something the world needs. Uh, don't be shy about you know, asking questions, sharing your knowledge. Um, most companies and corporations are a team of people, not just one person. So like I would say, use this as your network because it'll increase your network. So, but thank you, appreciate it. <laughs>